The new mayor was feeling tired after all the parties and traditional rituals held to celebrate his victory. The ceremony held to mark the assumption of duties had been a simple and serious one. Now all that was left was the event that only he and his private secretary were supposed to attend. The right to choose the time and place for that ceremony was given to the secretary as part of his official duties. So in an inversion of the way things were normally done, the mayor stayed in his official room until he got summons from his secretary. He walked about, mentally reviewing the things he had to do in the future. He also cast a keen look at his office table and chair. He didn't believe that they matched, just like some other officials also thought. The circular table was imported from China and could even be called a technical contraption. Because of the various blemishes upon it, it could be guessed that the different mayors who had sat at this table before had removed some parts of it and added some others as they had desired. It was made to make his work of governance easier. There were various buttons from which different parts of the table could be controlled. On one section of the table were buttons which could be pressed to call different people to his office. On the sides were the computer monitor and the monitor for the CCTV camera. The same table had some electric bulbs giving off different signals. On first seeing this, one could easily think that this table was a control panel of an airplane. It was that complicated and a person needed some time to get used to it. No mayor could do without the assistance of some official in his staff used to this, even if the mayor had sat in front of it by the people's vote. It took quite some time to get your hands and feet used to pressing the parts of this table and being practically competent at it. A considerable memory was also needed for this. In any case, all the mayors appointed so far had realized that the complete mastery of this table and chair was not possible within the official time allocated for their mayorships. The mayor's chair was quite a large one made of wood, with the Dharma Chakra at its head. It brought to mind the chair a monk would sit in when giving a sermon. Though every mayor could see how little this chair matched this table, none of them were allowed to change it. The new mayor wondered why all the previous ones had brought amendments and additions to this chair and table in ways in which their basic lineaments were not affected. That these had to be changed had been a fundamental decision he had made even before he contested the election. But now it was occurring to him that this might be a very complicated process. He sat on that chair and stared out the window for quite some time. He was gazing at the historic garbage heap in the corner of the municipal grounds near the entrance to the municipal council. Crows flew over in groups to rummage upon it and packs of dogs made a great effort to chase them away. The mayor wondered if the dogs were appointed by the municipal council because he could see that they were doing that with the seriousness of executing some official duty. But he quickly realized they were chasing their enemies who were competing with them for food. In the midst of the clamor of crows and barking dogs, he also began to hear the applause and cheers of the people he had greeted during the final election meetings. Friends, like I have always said, I tell you again, if you elect me, I will remove this garbage heap that has brought you so much sorrow and tears and make this an area where you can breathe freely and easily. I promise you that. From the reaction he got to that statement, the mayor had realized that the garbage heap was considered the main challenge and the primary misfortune in the lives of these people. And he asked himself honestly whether this was meant from the bottom of his heart, unlike the false election promises given by other mayors, and whether he had the real wish and the capacity to do it. Yes, I am not like the previous mayors. I will somehow take away this garbage heap from here. I will move it so that people will be able to breathe freely. That is my responsibility, my first duty. Yes, I will do it. He left his left thumbprint promise upon the mental agreement his conscience had drawn up. The mayor wanted to ponder upon the many future plans he had in the time he waited till he was officially called for the secret meeting by his secretary. But suddenly, 
He recalled that even the short meeting with the staff held a few moments before had been unpleasant. Sir, did you call us to find out about the electronic systems in the table and the chair? Or to talk about changing the table and the chair? He could hear the voice of an experienced officer. Listen, I didn't call you here to talk about any chair. Let the chair be. Let's talk about the work I will do seated on it. Yes, sir. You will have to first study how these systems are run. Okay, say that's true. But from the people's point of view, what do you think we have to do first? Sir, no matter what you choose to do, you will have to first take some time to learn to execute these systems in your table and chair. Again, that officer's voice began to echo in the mayor's ear. Yes, yes. But for that, I can get the services of an experienced officer. Is there nothing else of important that you can see? No, sir. We don't see anything especially important other than that. One officer spoke on behalf of all the others who were nodding their heads in agreement. Actually, don't any of you have noses? Ah, that problem, sir. That, of course, sir, is a problem that this municipal council has been having from time immemorial. Our noses are used to it now. Your room has been built in such a way that the smell doesn't reach you. You get it only when you step out of it. You might have to get used to it in that instance, sir. After a few days, your nose will get used to it. Now listen here. I came to this position with a promise to the people that I will get rid of this smell. We have to do this. Open this window a little. Please don't do that, sir. Then the smell will come in. That's all right. Open the window. Part the curtains. Since it was a command, a worker upon a sign given by an official went to the window on the left side of the mayor's chair, parted the curtains and opened one window pane, while all the officers narrowed their eyes. The mayor's nose as well as the eyes scrunched up. Now look. Doesn't it feel as if this huge garbage dump has been placed upon our heads? Isn't there any way in which we can remove it? Sir, try to understand what we are trying to tell you also a bit. The new secretary of the mayor began talking very patiently and carefully. You know, don't you, sir, that all the mayors before you also executed their duties while keeping that garbage heap intact. That is the logo of this municipal council, sir. If you try to remove it from here, starting with the donations that we are getting, everything will stop. It was by showing that garbage heap that earlier mayors managed to keep this municipal council going. If you try to remove it, you might even lose this position, in short. The secretary explained, deepening and then easing the furrows of maturity on his forehead. How can that be, man? Isn't this garbage heap the exact problem that people have? I told during my campaign that I would remove this and make a place for people to live and breathe freely in a clean and beautiful environment. To do that, I need the help of the municipal council officers and its workers. If not, I will somehow do it alone. The mayor was brought to the present by him receiving intimations from the secretary that the time had come for him to ceremoniously accept the sword that was traditionally handed over to him at an auspicious time. It was now clear to him that he wasn't going to receive the gem-studded hilt of that historically important sword nestling in its golden sheet amidst the beating of ceremonial drums with the blessings of priests from all religions under the lights of a thousand cameras. But he still believed that the sword would really have a gem-studded hilt and would be resting in a shiny golden sheath and would give out a heavenly gleam. With this mental visualization, he walked with his secretary along a lonely corridor. The room they ended up in was one that had standing room for two people only and had as illumination only an old-fashioned torch made of copra that was stuck on the wire mesh on the floor and was filled with pieces of copra. It was lit by the secretary. When this room that had been in darkness when they had entered was slowly illuminated, the mayor wiped off the beads of sweat that had come upon his forehead with his palm. He felt a fear that he had never experienced before in his life. A suspicion grew 
about his secretary that he himself had appointed, having chosen him from amongst the closest and most trusted acquaintances he had. A sudden feeling that he was brought here to be assassinated came from the sense of mystery and eeriness that the room itself carried. His fear doubled and trebled when he realized that the secretary was getting ready to hang something on the wall behind his head. He was immediately reminded of the video scenes that he had seen that had recorded the bombers getting ready for the Easter bombings. He had seen in not one, but many videos, a banner being strung on the wall and then some promises being made to it. He felt that what was going to happen now was going to be equally dangerous. He wondered whether the secretary had a plan to slit his throat with the sword that he was about to hand over. He folded his hands into fists and focused all his strength into it and lay his complete trust upon that for the moment. The secretary hung the banner on the wall in silence. It carried not a slogan but a portrait. The mayor could immediately identify the figure as someone belonging to the Brahmins of India. The naked torso, the turbaned head, a long pure white beard, and the white thread strung across his upper body, starting from his left shoulder, marked him clearly as a Brahmin. Sir, this portrait is of Upatissa Brahmana, the advisor to King Vijaya. He is considered the eldest of our official clan. All the state secrets that we are carrying have been protected and handed down for generations by this official clan. What's going to take place now is the ceremony to link these with politics. It has become a very private ceremony concerning only the two of us because it is also connected to a divine secret. We will both have to believe, whether we like it or not, that we will never reveal these secrets even if there comes a time when there will be misunderstandings between us and you might even leave the office. You will not have to promise separately that this will be so. For the moment, let's just say that what you are about to hear will guarantee that you will have to keep this secret with you forever. The mayor tried to show that he was not confused by the speech that the secretary gave. After that, the secretary took a sword that had been unsheathed and leaning against a wall in a corner behind the copra torch. The mayor strongly believed that that could not be the royal sword that he was about to get. He immediately thought that this was a weapon that the secretary had taken up to kill him. He took a step back and got his fists ready again, giving the strength of his left fist to the right one and being willing to strike a blow that would burst the bowels of this sword-wielding fiend if necessary. He was getting ready not only his right fist, but his left leg as well for that purpose. Sir, take this sword into your hands. You have to believe that no matter what you say before the people, your existence and trust depends on this sword that contains the secret spells of Upatissa Brahmana and has come down from hand to hand through generations to us. This is not the type of sword you expected. It is not a sword like those made for royal ceremonies. It's a functional working sword, a sword that has worked. The secretary held the sword in both hands and offered it with great respect to the mayor. The mayor said, You know, I am the type of person who doesn't believe in tradition. What I believe in is people. The secretary handed over the sword to the mayor without saying anything. The mayor took it with both hands and transferred it to the hand he was most used to. He was instantly freed from all fear about the secretary and believed that he was now secured against all danger. With it, he also felt that this was no royal sword but simply a sword of iron that you could suspect a murderer wielding, that it was not a sword of royal descent but the traditional sword of murderers. This is not a royal sword, is it? Sir, it is a sword made by mixing two metals. One of these metals is a symbol of your royal lineage. The other metal is the one that is the symbol of the Upatissa Brahmana and us. 
So I don't know how it can not be royal. But now you have held it in your hands. So now you have the responsibility of keeping this sword near you till your official term comes to an end. The mayor looked at the sword for some moments. Sir, you promised the people that you would remove that garbage heap, didn't you? Yes. That has to be my first official duty. I thought that even before I came here. That is not a promise I made lightly. Your idea is commendable, sir. However, sir, it is a promise that no one has ever kept. You will also have to forget about it from this moment on. Are you mad? I don't like to break people's trust in me. That has to be done somehow. If you don't want to help me, I will get help from somewhere and get it done. Though the mayor felt nerve-tingling anger when he saw the sarcastic smile of the secretary, he gripped the sword in his right hand and said nothing, realizing with some indescribable fear that he was still caught in a room in which the secretary's power seemed complete. Sir, forgive me. You are still new. Our lineage of officials has kept some secrets among themselves. Even we don't know what they are completely. But there is a secret that we have protected so far that is going to be told to you now. You will realize that apart from looking for alternatives, there will be absolutely nothing else that you can do. The mayor's forehead furrowed. What is that secret? The mayor looked impatiently and intently at the face of the secretary and waited. Sir, this secret is not called a political secret but a state one. It belongs to the state and doesn't change simply because governments change. Protecting it has been done by our clan with some devotion that one would give the ceremonies at the Temple of the Tooth from the time of kings. You will have to make a determined wish to do your duties while protecting it like a divine secret. Now keep the hilt of the sword on your forehead and turn towards the portrait of our ancestor and make the wish and determination to move forward while protecting your position as well as the secret. The mayor couldn't recall an instance where he had been this helpless before. He had been under the belief that he had had the power to act as he wished. But now his head began to feel heavy with the feeling that an invisible hand from above was squeezing his neck. Dismissing like one would the bitter spit in the mouth at awakening the mental promise that the secretary told him to make, he looked at the portrait of Upatissa Brahmin in the banner that was hung in front of him moments before. Suddenly he felt as if the painting changed from being an ordinary Brahmin to a majestic one of a powerful god. He could see many flags surrounding the painting as well. His mind was not clear enough to say if they were the national flags of other countries. He could suddenly feel that this windowless room, no bigger than a toilet, quite unlike the large and luxurious official room, suddenly took on an air of a very powerful space. His head involuntarily bent before the portrait of the majestic Brahmin that was glimmering in the light of the copra torch. He then took all his courage and banished all thoughts of fear from his mind and faced his secretary, looking as if he had made the wish he was told to make, though he had done nothing of the kind. Sir, now I am going to tell you that secret. It will just take a second in telling, but we will have to make a great effort to protect it, sir. The mayor waited without turning his emotion or impatience into words, with his eyebrows furrowed. Sir, that garbage heap is not a garbage heap. There is garbage on the top. Underneath, it is a mass grave. There are marks on each of those corpses made by the tip of the sword that I just gave you. Now you have touched that sword. By now your fingerprints too have been etched on the hilt in ways that are irreversible. If you remove the garbage heap, the mass grave will be revealed. If the mass grave is revealed, evidence will be uncovered. If evidence is uncovered, there is no need for me to explain further, is there, sir? Are you trying to blackmail me? No, sir. All of us got involuntarily blackmailed. All that is needed is understanding. 
The mere Sunday felt that his head too had got separated from his neck by that self-same sword. He could not understand whether the stroke that did it was wielded by the secretary or by his own self, or by all the previous mayors or the Brahmin in the painting, or if not any of that, whether it was by the people themselves. Again he looked at the portrait of the Brahmin that seemed anointed with divinity. He had realized that his fingerprints were embedded in the hilt of the sword in ways that could not be erased. He faintly remembered bending his head, almost without volition, before this adviser to the king, at a moment when all his strength and confidence had seemed to have been drained away. Sir, the official duties that we had to perform inside this room is now over. It is difficult to stay inside this. It has little oxygen. Let's go out now. Rest this sword that you have symbolically taken up in the leather sheet behind your throne. Then, tell me an alternative to the promise I gave the people in this secret room of yours as well. That's easy, sir. Let's export an enormous canvas from China and cover the garbage heap with it. And then get painters to draw pictures upon that canvas, the secretary said, smiling, holding his hand out for a handshake with the mayor.